Welcome to the second video about linear mixed effects models, where we'll cover random slopes and how to interpret an interaction between two fixed factors. We'll also see how to compute a linear mixed effects model in R and SBSs. We will use the following example data of body weights in kilos before and after 1, 2 and 3 weeks on a diet. The first two individuals have tried diet A, whereas the last two individuals have tried diet B. Let's plot the data. These are the body weights of subject number 1 over the 3 weeks on diet A. And these are the weights of the second subject. The green data points represent the weights of the two individuals on diet B. If you use simple linear regression to fit a line to this data, such a line will have an intercept of about 89.775 and a slope that is approximately equal to negative 2.975. This means that estimated average weight loss is about 3 kilos per week. As we discussed in the previous video, since simple linear regression assumes that all data points are independent, it results in a relatively high p-value, which tells us that the slope is not significantly different from zero. Since we have repeated measures on the same individuals, a linear mixed effects model is more appropriate to use. In this first example, we will analyze a model with random intercepts, which means that we estimate the intercept for each individual, but where we assume that all individuals have the same slope. Note that I will here use the same notations as in R's LME4 package, where we place the fixed effects here and the random effects here. To the left hand side of the pipe, we specify if we like to use a random intercept or slope, or both. A one represents that we like to create a model with only random intercepts for the subjects. The corresponding R code for this example looks like this. At the end of this video, I will show the steps in SPSs as well. Note that these equations are equivalent. To compute the likelihood, we need to set this argument to false. This is our data frame that holds our data of the body weights. The following package can be used to compute the p-values based on LME4 package. Note that there are several different ways to compute p-values in linear mixed effects modeling, which means that different software tools might generate different p-values. If we run the R code, we can extract the following values from the output. The bold numbers represent the output of the fixed effects, whereas this is the output of the random effects, which can be extracted like this. Note that these estimates are the same as when we previously used simple linear regression, which can be seen as the overall or average estimates. This value represents how much bigger the intercept of person number 1 is compared to the overall intercept. For example, the intercept of the first person is estimated to about 101. The p-value associated with the slope is now very small, which means that we can now conclude that the slope is significantly smaller than zero. If you study the data points, it seems like all four individuals have about the same weight loss over time, which suggests that all individuals should have the same slope. On the other hand, it makes more sense that people lose weight at different rates, because different subjects will respond differently to the diet. We can therefore argue that we should also allow for a random slope. To add random slopes, we add the variable weeks here, because we like that the subjects should have individual slopes that are associated with the variable weeks. If we run this model, each individual will now have a line with a certain intercept and a slope. For example, person number 1 has an intercept of about 90 plus 12, and a slope that is 0 0.353 steeper than the average slope. Subject number 1 has therefore an estimated slope of about negative 3.3. It seems like higher random intercepts are associated with lower values of the slopes. The output from R shows that there is a negative correlation between the random slopes and intercepts, which is somewhat expected. Individuals with higher initial weight reduce their weight faster than people with a lower initial weight. 
We'll now try a model where we allow for random slopes, but where all individuals have the same intercept, which is denoted by zero. Using a fixed intercept is clearly not appropriate for this data, since the subjects have different weights before starting the diet. This explains why the lines do not fit well with the data. A fixed intercept and random slopes might be more relevant if we fit them all to only the way it changes, because all four individuals will have the value zero before they start the diet. We'll now try the following model where the type of diet has been included. We first try a model with only random intercepts. The intercept of the fixed part of the model now represents the overall intercept of the ones on diet A, which is here set as the baseline category. We see that the ones on diet B have an overall intercept that is about 16 kilos lower than the ones on diet A. Note that we here assume that both diets have the same slope. Subject number 1 has an intercept that is about 3 kilos bigger than the overall intercept for the ones on diet A. For example, the estimated intercept of subject number 3 is equal to 97.962 minus the distance to the overall mean of the ones on diet B plus 1.309, which is how much bigger the intercept of person number 3 is compared to the overall intercept for diet B. We see that the p-value for the diet is less than the general significance level of 0.05 which means that the ones on diet A have a significantly higher initial weight compared to the ones on diet B. However, it would be more interesting to see if there is a significant difference in the weight loss per week between the two diets. To test this, we can include an interaction term in the model, which means that we now allow that the ones on diet A have a different slope compared to the ones on diet B. The ones on diet A which is our baseline in this example, have a slope of negative 3.4, whereas the ones on diet B have an estimated overall slope of negative 2.55. However, the p-value of the interaction term is greater than 0.05, which tells us that the interaction is not significant. The slopes in diet A and B are therefore not significantly different. In other words, there is no significant difference in average weight loss per week between the two diets. Since we saw earlier that people with a high initial weight tend to lose weight faster, it would have been better if we had initially assigned the subjects so that the initial mean weight of the people in the two groups had been similar. If we also allow for random slopes in these models where we test the effect of the diet, the algorithm in the Elmer function will no longer converge, because our model is simply too complex relative to the dataset. Although it makes sense to allow for random slopes, we should avoid building a model that is too complicated. As usual, the more data we have, the better predictions we'll get. If we should compare two diets, we should of course include more than two subjects in each group. It is recommended that a random effect should have more than 5 levels. This means that for this example we need at least 6 subjects. The reason why I only have 4 subjects in this example is that it is easier to illustrate how the method works when we have a simple dataset. We now have a look at how we can compare two models. Similar to multiple linear regression, it is possible to compare two nested models, for example a model with or without an interaction, with a likelihood ratio test by using the ANOVA function in R. But the first model should be the null model, which is the simplest model with fewest parameters. Although the log likelihood is larger for the model with interaction, which means that it fits better to the data, it does not fit significantly better than a null model. Remember from the videos about comparing Poisson regression models or logistic regression models that the likelihood ratio test statistic is calculated like this, where the p-value is calculated based on a chi-square distribution with degrees of freedom equal to the number of additional estimated parameters in the alternative model relative to the null model. Finally, I will just briefly show the steps in SPSS version 26 that you can use to get the same results as in this video 
based on a model with random intercepts and an interaction term. So enter the data as shown here, and code died A as 1 and died B as 0. Then go to Analyze, Mixed Models and Linear. Skip the first window by clicking Continue and then move the variables as shown here. Set the fixed and random effects and select that you would like to see the parameters for the random effects. Note that this option is available only for new versions of SPSs. To get the same estimates as in this video, use the following settings. The output tables in the SPSs should correspond to the numbers in this video. This was the end of this lecture about linear mixed effects models. Thanks for watching.